Hello and welcome to our second virtual opening here at the Portland Art Gallery on this first Thursday of May. My name is Emma Wilson and I'm the director here. We're delighted to have you join us. Uh, first, I would like to say a couple of thank yous. Thank you to our first responders and to our health professionals and to our postal delivery workers and our policymakers and our UPS partners and our, and our Hannaford attendees. Um, you're really uh, just tremendous amount of, of gratitude to you and all the hard work that you're doing to help all of us to stay safe and to keep moving forward. Also, thank you to our clients whose support, uh, is, your support is, is enabling a livelihood for our artists and for our gallery to, to stay open. So thank you for your business. And to our artists, keep working. We love working with you. And thank you for sharing your images of hope and, and inspiration. Uh, we send a lot of emails. Some of you may notice that. <laughs> um, and we often receive uh, feedback from our subscribers. So I wanted to just take a moment now to share, um, share one with you that was uh, truly special from Barbara. So as I was this morning enjoying the art and realizing my gratitude, I had to write and let you know. I am missing my museums and galleries terribly, and when things reopen, visiting will be first on my things to do. I also wanted to let you know another interesting thing or two I've learned from your emails. Seeing a photo of a piece is not in any way, shape, or form the same as seeing the real thing or experiencing the art in a gallery or space. So at first I was a bit dismissive of these, nice idea, I get what you're trying to do, and I scrolled quite quickly through the email, and then slowly a change happened. Maybe it was because I realized, well, this is all I'm gonna be getting for a while, better than nothing. But I started to see a value, firstly a dose of beauty and creativity, but secondly a chance to really study a piece, take my time with it, zoom in. There's more. Your emails focusing on an artist really got me to know the artist's style. So when today's email arrived with a theme of home and multiple artists' work were featured, I found myself happily saying, oh, I know who did that piece, or I recognize this style. And best of all, an artist you had featured previously whose work I, I didn't really warm up too much struck me today. Her piece featured was so happy and whimsical, it made me smile. And then I had to laugh at myself. Oh, this is the artist you thought you didn't care for. So lesson learned there, her piece was my favorite amongst all that were showcased today. So I'm finding that your emails are in fact not only a delight for their beauty, but valuable to me as an art experience and learning about myself and how I connect with the art. I'm not a fan of digital life, but your emails have taught me something and I am appreciating them very much actually. I wanted you to know your efforts are making a difference. Well, thank you, Barbara. You sharing your thoughts is making a difference with all of us in this gallery community as well. So with that, in the age of digital, in our digital age, we're going to turn our attention to this evening's um, feature artists, Jean Jack, Sheep Jones, and Philip Barter. So we'll begin with Jean Jack. Hi, this is I'm Jean Jack, and thank you for joining me in my studio in, in Freeport, Maine. Uh, I am part of the new show that's coming up at Portland Art Gallery and my paintings are going to be something different for me. They are aerial views of farms and farmhouses and barns in Maine. And I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing them all together at the gallery and I hope you enjoy them. Thank you. I like it because I was getting tired of just having a, a straight line going across and a the sky and then the, the grass and the farmhouse and barns. And I wanted to fill the painting, the whole canvas, and this is the way I thought to do it. Thank you, Jean, for, um, for sharing your remarks. And now I'd like to turn your attention to the artist Sheep Jones from, from Belfast, one of our newer members of our art community. Um, so tap off your glass of wine, pour yourself another seltzer, and please enjoy. Hi, I'm Sheep Jones. I'm going to be in the May show at the Portland Art Gallery. I'm really happy about that. I, um, I started painting when I was 16 and continued to go on to college at the University of Southern Maine. I majored in oil. I then transferred to watercolor for a while, which 
really gave me an understanding about transparent colors. But I really, really missed the high contrast, the wonderful nature of oil in itself. So I went back to oil. Um, for this show, I concentrated on having 12 small pieces, six by sixes, that, um, that show very well in a grid form. It's kind of a little sampling of, of all the things I do, some of the series I do, like a fish walker and a garden and a botanical and a shed. And it's a way of presenting a sampling of my small works in a larger format. Many of the works in this show share a similar process. First, so I, I apply a dark layer of color on a board. When it's dry, I change the surface by smudging, pressing, stamping, and scraping paint on the entire panel, leaving different shapes and colors. Now it's explosive, chaotic. Next is the discovery. This is when the painting starts to kind of reveal the background for the, I guess, narrative. Shapes emerge as I work from top to bottom. And once I decide on the story, it's time to balance it out with more formal decisions to its completion. I completed three larger 36 by 36 paintings for this show that started in that same method. This is the beginning of one. From there, I think of maybe what what do I want to do with this? What narrative do I want to tell? I don't always know, but sometimes like with this one, I definitely want to have a face and I'm starting from the top, finding forms in a very dark color. On this next one, I decided to use a lavender. Finding forms helped me decide what the square was going to be. I knew it would be some kind of a a botanical or a pod. Well, that's it for now, folks. Thank you for tuning in. It was fun to sort of show you some of the process, even though it was sort of a short presentation. I'm happy to be painting in these crazy times, and I hope everybody's staying safe. Bye. Thank you, Sheep, for your remarks. And now I'd like to turn our attention to this month's feature artist, the iconic Philip Barter. I'd like to share a few remarks by Maine author and art critic Carl Little to uh, about Philip. 
Barter's art harks back to Marsden Hartley and other American modernists and their abstracting ways. A kind of school has sprung up in his own impressive wake. You can hear a gallery goer point, we hear this all the time, to a brashly painted main landscape by a contemporary and say, I see a little bit of Barter in there. And you can understand why. The appeal of Barter's stylized renderings of trees and rivers, mountains and clouds, it's powerful. His ability to extract the essence of the landscape provokes marvel. He sees the geometry of a peak, the jagged coursing of woodland streams, a snowfield's curving contours. His palette, often not for the faint of hue, underscores his lively vision. So please join me in listening to Remarks by Philip Barter. Right now? Yes. Oh, okay. My what? name, I'm Phil Barter, and I'm a main artist. I have been since 1960. <laughs> Excellent. Um, what's your uh, personal background? Personal background. Born in Maine uh, from a working family. And I was interested in art and especially I began my, my interest started with cartoons, I guess. And uh, like in the Sunday papers? Uh, like in the Sunday yeah, papers? So I, I used to, yeah, put the cartoons a lot and try to imitate them. And, and Any enjoy, ones in particular? Enjoy the art. Oh, Crazy Cats. Yes. Cats and Jammer Kids. Nice. <laughs> oh, one of my favorite one was uh, Smokey Stover. Smokey Stover. Yeah, yeah, they had great characters on there. Was it would were, were they colored or they black oh, and yeah, white? They're, no, they're, that's why I like the Sunday papers because they were colored more Prince, graphic. The Prince Valiant was one of my favorite. Things. I remember you said that. Yeah. So, so you guys, so you have these really graphic com comic books and Sunday funny papers. Exactly. That's awesome. And yeah. so, in general, what is your work about usually? Well, uh, I guess uh, there's kind of two categories. It means landscapes that I. I, uh, I guess my style would be expressionistic, and I, I studied art in a crazy commune in California in the '60s, and, uh, and but I just I learned a lot, and my style I guess is expressionistic. That is that what I try to do is not visual, but emotional and personal, and trying to transform the landscape into into something I like. Yeah. And I guess the easiest way to put it, and I've said this so many times, and it's almost wrote, but in an interview with Tim Sample, when he asked me how I would describe my work, I, 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 I can't think of any better way to put it, that I told him, that, well, you know the sign that you see when you're coming into Maine, it says, it's Maine the way life is. So, well, my paintings are the way Maine should be. <laughs> so, so the science is the way the way life should be yep. so you're painting the way Maine should be exactly so yeah. it's idealistic it's yeah. not, I'm not trying to be facetious. and that's that's idealistic according to your childhood right exactly. in the 40s 50s when that's right and another way I think it would would, uh, would, would go along with that a description it, I remember one one guy at an art opening or something said that I heard him say you know, I have a 10-year-old girl that can paint like that. And I just, I went up to him and I said, yeah, I know, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. so it's taken me about 40 years to paint like a kid again, or 25 years, I guess it took me to do that. Yeah, it's sort of cyclical. You start out with a nice freedom of expression, yeah. then you come right back around to it, in a way, right? <laughs> yeah. Nice. And so, I've been so, getting away with it for since the 60s, was that 60 years, I guess. Yep, I love it. So, and then what is your process briefly? My process? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I begin with a, a small, simple sketch. Uh, uh, usually a small sketch to reduce the detail. And I I guess what I'm doing, I focus on composition. And then, then I think of color later. When I draw it out, then I think of color or sometimes I Priscilla takes photographs of what I'm sketching, and I take notes, color notes from that, and put it together. Sometimes I'll do four or five paintings. If it's a good sketch, I use the sketch over and over, and 
just makes different variations of it. Excellent. A, a good sketch is a great resource. Yeah. You know, shouldn't be just scrapped after you use it once. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it get, they get better, right? That's right. Yeah. Or you burn them. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. That's another thing, guys. One time, it's how long is it taking to do a painting? And I said, well, uh, the bad ones. Uh, no, no, the good ones, not very long. It's the bad <laughs> ones that take all your time. That's right. That's right. Good. <laughs> Well, thank you for uh, the interview today, Phil Barter. Yep. Nice to visit with you. All right. All righty. Thank you for joining us for our second virtual opening on this first Thursday of May. We look forward to the days when we can open up our gallery doors, but until then, stay in touch with us 24-7, online, uh, we can ship anywhere, and we look forward to hearing from you. Uh, be well, stay safe. <laughs>